Today, I'm going to show you a really simple way to highlight either square or rectangular property lines with your real estate drone footage. This is a really simple way to accomplish this effect. It does have a few limitations, but for a lot of cases, it's a very easy and fast way to highlight the property without having to do anything in Fusion. So first, I'm going to show you what it looks like, and then I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. You can see it just kind of fades in, has a nice little transition even the acreage kind of writes on and it's is tracked with it and then it fades away so to accomplish this effect like i said it's pretty easy to do but there's just a few limitations that you should be aware of so let's go to a different part of the footage to uh for to show you how i did this so i'm gonna go ahead and do uh from here to here i'm gonna play back the footage and make sure that it looks nice and smooth and there's no major changes in speed or rotation or the way that the camera was moving at the time so I'm going to make a marker there and a marker there. So that'll be, those are my in and out points for creating this effect. Now, the other part of this effect is you have to have a white box image, PNG, JPEG, whatever you want it to be. Um, and I just made one in, you, you can do Photoshop or, or paint.net, whatever you have. And it's just a 4,000 by 4,000 white box. So I'm going to click and drag that onto my timeline right here. And then I'm going to put it right here and trim it to my in and out points. Now, obviously that's not the effect that we saw in the beginning. So I need to do a couple things. First, I'm actually going to enable some transparency on it. Uh, so let's bring the opacity down to about 30%. After that, I'm gonna go into my effects and inside of here, I'm gonna go to open effects, right here, resolve FX transform, we're gonna use transform. And we're gonna bring that down onto this white box, just like that. Now, once we have that transform, instead of using sliders for control mode, we're gonna to go to interactive pins. Now, once we've selected interactive pins, we do have to make sure that we have open effects overlay enabled inside of our view. That will outline the, the image, and then we can come up here and we can click up in the corner to create that first corner, come up here and then click inside the second corner. And then we do need to go down to our third and then our fourth over here. Just make sure you create those points in the corners, because if you create them in other areas, it's going to mess mess things up pretty substantially. All right, so now that I have these corners, I'm going to go ahead and place them. Um, so you want to make sure that you're at the beginning of the clip before you actually start aligning up the points, because we're going to set keyframes. We're going to set those points to the four corners here. Looks like that next one will probably be about right, right there. So I'll put it right on top of that black spot, kind of make a mental note of where that pin is. And then I'll go ahead and place this one, which goes up to the road, the fence line here, and it goes to the road. So right there. Okay. And then the last one we're going to bring down and it's hard to see with these trees. So you just probably have to do your best and kind of guess, but I think that looks pretty good right there. Okay, perfect. Now that I have it placed, when I play it back, it doesn't follow my footage because I haven't set the other keyframe yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the beginning and I'm going to go to animation and I'm going to do enable the pin keyframe right here. And we're going to go to the end of the clip and we're going to reposition all four of those corners. And now you can see that it's actually tracking quite nicely. And that looks pretty good. It's not going to be a perfect track. So obviously if you were to do this in fusion, the results would be much more accurate. But the point of today is just to be able to do it within just a couple minutes and have it finished very, very quickly. Okay. Now that I have that done, I can go ahead and deselect my effects right there and it pops in, shows the property line and goes away. Quite nice. But let's go ahead and add some text to it as well. Now, all we have to do for this is just go to titles and we're going to go to text plus, make it the same length. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to make it so the text completely fills the screen. And then I'm going to put in here, subscribe there we go and we're gonna do the same thing with the text that we did with the white box so let's go to our open effects come down here and hit transform enable our effects overlay and do interactive pins we're going to create a pin in each corner very good and then we're going to go ahead and place it and I'm gonna have it read subscribe with the S right here and then read this way. So it'll be a bit wonky as I first start doing it. Make sure we're in the first keyframe here. 
or the first frame of the clip. Put it down right there. Bring this one there. And this one, very good. Okay, go to animation. Enable pin keyframes. Go to the end. And replace or all four corners, just like that. We now have subscribe. And it, like I said, it tracks pretty well. It's not perfect, uh, but that's not necessarily the point. It's just a quick and easy way to get an engaging graphic on the screen that looks quite nice. But let's add just a little bit more to it. So it's a little more interesting to watch. Delete my, my uh, markers there. And I'm going to add some transitions. So for the text, I did text plus because I can go into video and title. I can keyframe right on. So let's do that and have it right on from about there to there. Enable a keyframe and have it be writing on all the way. And then we'll stop it there. Add another keyframe, go to the end, and then have it right, uh, right off. So now it'll type its way in, subscribe, and it types off. So that looks nice. But let's add a transition for the uh, white box. Now, some of DaVinci Resolve's transitions work for this, and some of them do not. So I found that the transition that works the best is actually the zoom in and out transition. So I'm going to add that to the clip, to the beginning of the clip. And it does kind of a zoom in and out, but it's a little bit too big and it's kind of cheesy. So let's use our arrow keys and find where the peak of the transition is. And it looks like it's right there. Right there is the peak or the kind of the middle of the transition. And we're going to reduce the scale to be just larger like that. So it does kind of bounce in. And that looks pretty good. I like that. Let's increase our opacity. There we go. Okay, and then we're just going to maybe reduce the length of that transition. And then we're going to hold Alt on our keyboard and copy and paste it to the end as well. Just like that. And there you go. That is how you do a very simple, simple property outline. So I did mention that there are some limitations. One of the obvious ones might be that your property line uh, might include cutouts or it might not. It might have some circular parts to it or uh, different things like that. And that is an obvious limitation of this effect. So to be able to to uh, to accommodate that, then you might actually want to use the Fusion tab to be able to create this effect or just create a custom graphic in Photoshop that's the exact shape of the property and then you can overlay it like this and then that would probably work as well. Um, but for just really quick square rectangle um, type properties, uh, this will work great. Uh, so I, there's no complaints here. So thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to get subscribed, I have a big surprise coming up soon that I'm going to be releasing uh, very, very soon and I'm going to be teaching you about how about all about how to use DaVinci Resolve and how to make more money and become a very fast and efficient editor. So again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.